I'm Jason and this is Build Apps Without Code and I've got something special for you today. So what are we doing? The same thing we do every day, Pinky. We're going to build apps without code. Actually, we're building an Instagram clone today in Bubble, super stoked, and we're going to step out of our comfort zone a little bit and do it with Bubble's new responsive Flexbox engine. Wait, this is the first time using Flexbox on this channel. It was a little daunting at first, but after using it for a bit, I honestly don't think I'm ever going to go back. I highly recommend the Switch. So, let's do this. I'm going to start with a little preview of what we're building today. This is Bachgram. You can see we have stories across the top. Uh, this is actually my dog, Ellie, who's at my feet right now. What's up, Ellie? I have another dog, Luna. We'll feature her later. We got Pup Tart. Max the Derp, Lil Bow Wow, Henry the Husky, and uh, Golden Daisy, who won't stop retrieving and is holding on to that feeling. Uh, so today we're going to focus just on design on this feed page. Uh, so we got the nav bar on the top, we have uh, the repeating group in the middle with the posts, uh, we have a nav bar on the bottom, and we have stories at the top. So that's what we're going to be building today. Uh, in later videos we'll work on other pages and functionality, but today we're just going to Design this feed page. Are you ready? One more thing I want to mention just before we get started. If you go to buildappswithoutcode.com slash Instagram clone and sign up, I will send you the link to this exact project in view only mode so you can see exactly how it was done. Okay, blank canvas. First thing we're going to do here, upgrade responsive, baby. Yeah, baby yeah. If you're in the future, you might not need to do this. All right, we're in. Come with me if you want to live. I'm going to make this 320 here in the layout section. 320 is a good width for building on mobile. And container layout, we're going to set up the column for now. I'll talk more about that in a second. If I go to grids and borders here, I'm actually going to lock my property editor on the side just because I have a lot of space here so I can lock it. Also, I usually have show grid on just so I can see what I'm doing here. So if we look back at our preview here, uh, this nav bar at the top, you can see how it stays, it sticks there as I scroll, and the same with the one at the bottom. So we can do that with a floating group. And so I'm gonna grab a floating group and throw it in. And we'll work top to bottom here, so we'll start with the nav bar on the top. I'm gonna rename this to floating group nav top. Now if I go to layout, the container layout for this is going to be row. And that means that elements are beside each other, left to right, horizontal. If I chose column, then they would be on top of each other. On our nav, since these elements are beside each other, left to right, it's going to be row. So that's our container layout. And we're not going to make it fixed width. I'm just going to take that off and say minimum width zero. And then it just fits the space that it's in here. Uh, minimum height. We're going to take this off after, but we'll leave it here for now. We'll just put some height in there just so we have some space to work with. Because if I put that to zero, then it just pretty much disappears and we can't work with it. So we'll leave it at 100 for now. And we'll take that out later. For appearance, I'm going to remove this style. We're, we're going to put a white background. That's good. One more thing I want to do here is put a border on the bottom. Now instead of choosing border style, I'm going to do a shadow style outset. And make these all zero except vertical offset, which will be one. And that'll put a nice border on the bottom. And we'll make it black, but uh, put some opacity on it. Let's preview that. To show this in mobile, like I had over here, I'm in Google Chrome. I'm going to go to Developer Tools. And we can put it in responsive mode where you can just open it and close it. But I'm uh, designing strictly for mobile, so I'm just going to use this iPhone 6, 7, 8 Plus. And that gives me the nice phone as well, which I like. I'm also going to take the debug. I'm also going to take the debug mode off by just taking it out of the URL. Or you can just set it to false. That takes that debugger off the bottom. So you can see my border there. Very subtle, but I like it. 
Okay, we've got our floating group. Now if I go to layout, I'm gonna put some padding on this group. And you can scroll right down to the bottom and there's padding. We'll do 10 all around. I'm gonna throw a group in here. I'll call it group. Nav top inner, this is gonna be row again. Not fixed width. We'll, we'll give it some height so we can see it. And first I want to throw a image in there, which is going to be our logo Bach gram. Let's upload that. A little big, a little squished. I'm going to make it 120. Actually, yes, fix, fixed width and keep element aspect ratio fixed. I know it's four to one. That looks good. We also need icons in the top, like the plus, the heart, and the message. Icon plus. That's a little big. Head to layout and we're gonna change that to 30 and 30. Copy paste. This one will be a heart. I heart you. Copy paste. And we'll use this comment one for our messages. Now, if we go to group nav top inner layout, we can set height to zero, and that closes that up. Fits nice and snug around the elements inside, and same for the floating group. So now that we have some stuff in there, we can set the height to zero. Looking good, except the icons are to the left. They should be to the right, but keep the logo to the left. So how do we do that? Here we have container alignment. If I go middle, right. This one is space around and space between. That is better. Let's check it out. It doesn't really work because um, I want there to be a fixed space between these icons. And I want them to kind of stay to the right. So let's group them together. If we select them all, and then right click, group elements in a row container. And it's going to be row because they're beside each other. Min width will be zero. Fix width the content, yes. Now I'm going to check apply gap spacing between elements. And that's going to put a bit of padding between these three icons. So we'll try 30 for column spacing. That looks better. There you go, now you can see that they stay on the right, but they have a little bit of spacing. Looking good. All right, let's work on the story section. Grab a group, drop it underneath. You can see it um, It drops right to the top underneath the floating group. So we want some margin on this group to push it down underneath that uh, nav bar. So in layout, I know it's 50 because it's uh, 30 on the inside and 10 pixels on the top and bottom, which equals 50. Uh, so that'll push our group right underneath it. This is going to be called group stories. It's a row. Not fixed width, min width zero. Now it fits nice and snug, takes all available space. We'll leave it at 250 for now. And if I have a style here called group blue so that I can see my groups. So we'll just change it to group blue for a second. And back in layout, I want some padding here. I'm gonna try 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom, 20 left and zero right because we want to scroll 
horizontally so we don't need any padding on the right. I have my group stories here. I'm going to throw in a repeating group. This is where my stories are going to live, so we'll call it repeating group stories. Type of content is going to be user, and we're going to do a search for all users for now. Just because for now we're just working on design, so we're not worried about which ones are actually showing up. We're just going to show all of them. Fixed number of rows, one. One row because we're scrolling horizontally. Columns, uh, no fixed number because we can show as many as there is. We'll do 75 pixels for now. That gives me four even columns here. Since 75 times four is 300 plus 20 pixels on the left of padding, uh, makes 320, which was the size of our canvas here. Let's head to layout. Cells container layout, we can do row. Not fixed width. Minimum height, we'll just start it at 200. We'll change that later though. That just gives us some space to work with here. I'll grab a group, throw it in the first row here. This is where each individual story is gonna be. Container layout, column. Column because we're gonna have things stacked on top of each other. We're gonna have the profile picture on top and the username underneath. Uh, let's make a fixed width actually. For now we'll do 75. All right, we can set it to 200 as well. We'll change that later. Put a little bit of padding. Maybe 10 on the top, five left and right. We'll try that. Image. We need an image for the profile picture. Call it image story profile pic. It's gonna be dynamic. We're gonna get it from the parent groups thing. Uh, we haven't set that yet though. So back on group story, type of content is user. Data source is current cells user. Current cell from the repeating group. Now here, parent groups, users, profile picture. Now we're gonna click more, if you can see that. Click on processed with IMG, IX, IMGX, IMGX? IMGX? Quality we can do 100. Resize to fit the dimensions by cropping. That's what's important here because we want all the pictures to be the same size. And run mode ren run mode rendering will set to stretch. Then the layout. We'll try 55 just to give some space in between each picture. Fix width, fix height and we'll center it. Let's take a look. A couple things here. We don't need the line in between. The picture should be circle, not square. And then we'll add the username. So on my repeating group, we're gonna remove the style, take out the separator. Now the picture, roundness, we're gonna set to a big number. 50 should work. And that'll just make sure that it is nice and round. And throw a text object underneath for username. Dynamic data, parent groups, users, username. I already have style set up. I'm using Roboto. Roboto 12 layout, not fixed width. Minimum width zero. Minimum height zero. Looking better. It's a little tight to the picture, the username. So in our in the parent group, group story, remember apply gap spacing between elements. Now we're gonna put some row gap in there. We'll try eight. And now just put some space between these two elements, which are on top of each other because it's a column group. That's good. And we just need to center the name. Also truncate it. Henry the Husky is a little too long, doesn't quite fit. Let's truncate it. If I click more. Truncated to. Number of characters. I'm going to try eight. And then I'm going to put dot dot uh, after it. 
That didn't work. Truncate to eight, enter. Now I can put dot, dot, dot. And I want to center it. Now instead of centering it on the style, I want to keep the style left aligned. I can do it a different way. If I just say square bracket, center. And square bracket slash center. Center. That should do it. You can also bold that way, left align, right align. Probably some other things. Looking fantastic. One thing I want to do here is, here's Ellie and Luna. This is my user that I'm signed in as. This one should show up at the front. How do we do that? Hmm. On the repeating group, I'm going to open it up for a second. I'm going to change this to 150. We still have this group. I'm going to make another one, like a duplicate, that has my story in it. And we're only going to show it on the first row. I'll show you how to do that. And copy paste this so they're right beside each other. And this left one is going to be my story. So it's not going to be the profile picture from the row anymore. It's going to be different. It's going to be the current user. This is the user signed in. Current user's profile picture instead. And this is going to be current user's username. Okay, now it's showing up double. You can see how many times Ellie and Luna is showing up. So I only wanted to show up the first time. I'm going to use a condition on this group, group story. When current cells index is one, then we show it. This element is visible is yes. Otherwise, hide it. So in layout, this element is visible on page load. Hide and collapse when hidden. I'll show you why that's important. We'll leave it unchecked for now. So now it's only showing up at the beginning, but there's a bunch of space because we didn't collapse it when hidden. So it's hidden here. It's hidden here, but it's not collapsing. So watch this. Wrong. There's still space because we changed this to 150. This was 75. Correct. Oh, Ellie and Luna is showing up twice, though. We can fix it. Search for users. Add one, one constraint for now. Username does not equal current users. Username. And let's shrink all this up as well. So group story, minimum height, zero. Repeating group, minimum height, zero. And the outermost parent group, minimum height, is zero. So now that we have stuff in there, we can set it to zero and it'll just fit the content. Didn't quite fit the content. I missed one. There it is. How good does that look? Moving on. I don't know where this group came from, but we'll use it. Group post. Actually, no. We want a repeating group here because if you look at our final version here, all these posts are in a repeating group. So the repeating group should start right underneath the story. Also, we need a border. See that border? It's a nice little border. Group stories. Remove style. Remember we use shadow style, outset. Set that to one, set that to zero, nice little border. Set that to 10, okay. Repeating group. 
posts. Type of content, posts. Data source, let's just do all of them for now. However, sort by, create a date, chronological order. No algorithm on this app, guys. All right. Not fixed width, zero minimum width. We can leave it here for now. This is going to be column. Why? Because things are going to be stacked on top of each other. Look at this. Picture, icons, text, it's all stacked on top of each other. That's why it's column. There's not going to be a fixed number of rows. But there is going to be a fixed number of columns, just one. So let's just make this give us a little more space for now. So, first thing we need is the username and the picture. So we're going to grab a group, throw it on top, group post, username, row, because the picture and the username are beside each other. Not fixed width. Let's try a little bigger, a little bigger for now. I'm just gonna grab this, throw it in there, but it's gonna be smaller. Okay, we'll try 30. Now we need some padding in here. We'll do tens. Let's leave the top at zero for now. And see how that looks. All right, take out the separado. Can put in the username beside the profile picture. Parent group, we didn't set it. Type of content on parent group is post from the current cell. Now we can say parent groups post users username. Not fixed width. No min height. I'm going to use Robo14 for this, and I'm going to bold it with square brackets. And let's see. The picture is not dynamic, so we'll fix that. And we need some space. Apply gap spacing, column, try 10. This picture, we copied and pasted it, and this should actually be parent groups, posts, users, profile picture. And on this text, we're going to vertically align that and vertically align this. And then take out the height on the outer group there, minimum height, zero. And I'm actually going to put an, uh, another outer group here. So this group's gonna contain the entire post, the username, the picture, the caption. So we'll call this group post type of content. Use the current cells post. And this is a column, no min width. Give it a little bit of height for now. Whoop. Drag this in there. There we go. And this one, give a little bit of padding. Cool. Looking better. So we need the the main post now, like the picture. So I'm gonna grab an image. It's gonna be dynamic. Parent groups, posts, image. We're going to do this again. So it fits into the space that we give it. I'm 
we're going to have no fix width, no min width, no min height. Actually, maybe a small min height, but it'll grow. I'll show you. Let's do 50. How does that look? So see how this one is a little taller than Pop-Tart? So it, the, the height grows. We're getting there. We need the, the caption and the comments. And we need the bottom nav bar. So still a little bit to do. So if we look at our original design here, see how we have some icons right underneath the image? Heart, comments, share, bookmark. Let's add those in. We need another group. Uh, let's call it group posts, likes and stuff. I don't know. Likes and comments. This is going to be row because these icons are all beside each other. Let's just copy this one. This whole group I'm going to copy, throw it in here. Um, now we have, well the heart goes on the far left, so if I click on heart I can click previous and that moves it over. This one will be comments, well, let's choose a different comment one, that one. This one was the paper airplane. Change this group name, group likes and stuff enter. No, left. Because we need bookmark as well. So if we throw another one of these in, let's call this bookmark. We want that to go on the right side. Uh, so if we choose our outer group here, go layout, container alignment, space between. So since these are already in a group, because I copied the whole group, they stick together. And then it shoves uh, the bookmark, since it's not part of that group, all the way over to the right. Maybe some padding here on the outer group. Let's try 10. 10 all around, see what that looks like. Looks good. And if we go to responsive, you can see the icons stick together. We need a little more space here. Let's go to our page and minimum height. We'll just say 900 for now, maybe. And the repeating group. Open up 350, let's go. Will that open it up? Yes, but we need the row to be a little higher as well. Okay. Group post will open up. Next we need um, liked by, the caption, and the comments. We'll call this group post caption, caption and comments. This would be column, because they're stacked. We need some text inside. Liked by, we're just gonna hard code it for now. Cause we were just working on design, remember? Liked by 10,000 users. And I think the 10,000 was bold. Yes. 
square bra square brackets around the B will make just a 10,000 bold. Not fixed width, minimum width zero, minimum height zero. We need another text object. This one has dynamic data because it has the username, parent groups thing, which we'll set to post from parent group. Parent groups posts users username and we need the caption. A couple spaces. Parent groups posts caption. Not fixed width, minimum width zero. You get the idea. Okay, a couple things here. We need padding. I want, the, I want the username here to be bold, and I want some space between these two elements. And the style. Robo14. So here I'm going to make this bold. And on the outer group, group, post, caption, and comments, apply gap spacing. Try 10. And we want some padding there. So on that group, we'll also say left and right. We might need top and bottom too. I don't know. We'll see. It's a little bit too much. I think the text can be bigger too. So Robo 16. Robo 16, and this one, Robo 16. And the gap spacing was a little bit too much. We'll try like six. Looks better. We need view 10 comments. So let's just copy this, drop it underneath. Click next or, or make last. That'll put it at the end. View 10 comments. Color was different here. I'm going to remove the style and just get us a nice gray, maybe a little darker. And then we had um, like the add a comment, this thing right here. So there is another image here of the signed in user. I can just grab this group here. Throw it underneath, make last. Uh, this just said add a comment, dot, dot, dot. We'll use the same gray. And this, I think, is a little bit smaller. I'll try like 20. Don't think we need left and right on this one. Or bottom. Perfect. Last thing was the time. Timestamp. Copy and paste. Move it to bottom. Just hard code for now. Make it small, gray, good. I think we can close that off now. So min height on the outer group will be zero. And this can be zero. We need one more thing, the bottom nav bar. 
Let's just copy the top one. Copy. Paste. This is the copy, but it's sitting right on top of the other one. If you go to Appearance, Vertically Float Relative to Bottom. See that? Don't need that. And these icons, I want them to be spread out. So one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. I'm going to take them outside of this group we made here. Delete that. And there you go. Since the layout is set to um, space between, that'll put one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. If I put it to space around, then it puts a little bit of space on the left side and the right side of the outer icons, but we want space between. Now this one was different. Home. For now, we'll just do home search. This one's actually profile. So I want this. No, I want this. That's going to be last, so it goes on the end. And it is the current user's profile picture. Try 3030 on that. Now this we can close up to finish this off. On the so this this is 50 pixels, remember? So on the repeating group, which I can find here, I'm on group post. If I right click and say select first parent, I'm on repeating group. It just grabs the first outer parent. I'm gonna put a margin on the bottom of 50 pixels so that um, the stuff right at the bottom doesn't get hidden by the uh, nav bar, which is sitting on top. And now our main page, minimum height, what happens if we do zero? There we go, closes right up, nice. And there's our nav bar on the bottom. You can see that it floats on top, so why it's called a floating group. Little Bow Wow is uh, not looking very impressed with that outfit. All right, hope you enjoyed that. There's gonna be some follow-up videos. I'll make this a whole series. Uh, so this is just video one. If you go to builtappswithoutcode.com slash Instagram clone and sign up, I will send you the link to this exact project in Bubble in view only mode so you can open it up and see exactly what I did. Uh, I appreciate you watching as always. If you learned something today, please subscribe. It lets me know that people are watching and gives me the motivation to continue to make these videos. Um, so if, yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I have more of these Instagram clone videos in the pipeline and lots more bubble videos in the pipeline. Um, so yeah, turn on notifications and you won't miss the next one. You're awesome. Don't forget it. Much love. See you on the next one. Peace. Thank you so much.